Finding undervalued stocks might be challenging. And most importantly, the stocks have strong growth potential. However, there are some rules to finding undervalued stocks easily. Today in this video, we'll explain four simple rules for finding undervalued stocks, which will surely benefit you in finding those companies with strong growth potential. Online stock trading is becoming more popular in India because it is easy to do and can be profitable. That's why when trading stocks online, investors and traders are both constantly on the hunt for the next big thing, often known as undervalued stocks. Undervalued stocks can offer a chance for big profits. Stay until the end of this video to master these four rules we will discuss. Without further ado, therefore, here are those four rules. Rule number one, evaluate financial statements. A financial statement tells you how much money a company is making and how much it is worth. You can look more closely at the company's balance sheet to determine if its stock is undervalued. Number one, balance sheet. It shows what a company owns and owes at the end of a financial year. A company's net worth is used to figure out how much it is worth. The balance sheet consists of two main elements, assets and liabilities. Assets. A company's assets are its primary source of sustainable revenue growth. The cash flow from this helps cover the company's debts. Liabilities. When a company needs cash, it will either take on debt or use the resources of its stockholders. The company is responsible for paying these liabilities. The formula used for this purpose is net worth equals assets minus external liabilities. Number two, statement of profit and loss. This statement shows how much money a company made and how much it spent in a given fiscal year. Generally, investors are more interested in a company with a bigger net profit. These are the components of a profit and loss statement. Revenue. Earnings from selling a company's goods or services are known as revenue. For example, in 2021, Power Finance Corporation earned 71,700 crore Indian rupees, which is $9.5 billion in sales. Total expenses. When calculating expenses, it is important to account for operational costs financing costs, and applicable taxes. Net profit margin. Stocks with a larger net profit margin may be worth more to buyers because of their increased profitability. The formula for calculating net profit and net profit margin are net profit equals revenue minus total expenses. Net profit margin equals net profit divided by revenue. Number three, cash flow statement. There are three parts to a cash flow statement. Operating activities, financial activities, and investments. Higher operational cash flows are a sign of a successful business. Investors might buy shares of companies with higher operating cash flows. Rule number two, discounted cash flows, DCF. The discounted cash flow DCF model assumes that the value of a company's future cash flows is accurately reflected by its current market price. If a company's DCF value is higher than its current market price, one should purchase the stock immediately. The basic idea behind the discounted cash flow model is that a business is worth the present value of all the cash flows it will get in the future. So let's start with the idea of what something is worth now. People think that money today is worth more than the same amount at some point in the future. This is because money can be invested to make money, and inflation usually makes a dollar worth less and less over time. The price goes down, or the money is worth less, the further away the date is. The formula which is used for discounted cash flow is DCF equals future cash flows divided by discounting rate. Assumptions in this method are made. Future growth rates, cost of funds, and discounting rates. Rule number three, peer comparison. Peers within the same industry work in similar environments and use similar methods. So, it makes sense to compare them. Investors often compare a stock's financials to those of its peers and the averages for its industry. If a stock is cheaper than its peers, but has better financials, you should buy it. A peer group average is considered one of the best and most efficient ways to determine how much security is worth. Simply put, investors can compare the stock price of one company to that of its competitors by using specific metrics from that company's financial statements. Peer comparison analysis is one of the most valuable tools for a stock analyst or a person who wants to invest in common stocks. Because most of the information needed for the analysis is public and easy to find on financial websites, anyone can use this method. Before we jump to the fourth rule, make sure to hit the thumbs up icon below to like this video. Rule number four, ratio analysis. One common way to decide whether or not to buy a stock is to look at its key ratios. 
you can use a simple ratio like the price to earnings ratio PE to find whether a stock is undervalued. And there are other ratios to know the value of a stock. Number one, PE ratio. The price to earnings ratio shows how much an investor is willing to pay for a stock based on how much it makes. The PE ratio is one way to find stocks that are undervalued. The PE ratio is one method for identifying undervalued stocks in India in 2023. The PE ratio compares how much a stock is worth on the market right now to how much it makes per share. Most of the time, undervalued stocks will have a low PE ratio. Keep in mind that the standard PE ratio is different for each industry. For example, a stock with a 15 times PE ratio and a growth rate of 40% may be undervalued, while a stock with a 12 times PE ratio and a growth rate of 8% may be overvalued. The formula for PE ratio is PE ratio equals current market price divided by earnings per share, EPS. Number two, PB ratio. This ratio shows how many times of book value per share investors want to pay. Many investors use the price to book ratio PB ratio to compare a company's market capitalization to its book value and find undervalued companies. This number is found by dividing the company's current share price by its book value per share, BVPS. You can find the market value per share by looking at the information on most websites that track stocks. Find the company's balance sheet to determine how much money it has, how much money it owes, and how many shares it has. Most investment websites have a financials or summary tab where this financial report is shown. The formula for PB ratio is PB ratio equals current market price divided by book value per share, BVPS. Number three, ROE. Return on equity ROE is a key indicator for investors. Investors are willing to pay more for a stock with a high ROE. Return on equity ROE is a key metric that shows how much profit a company makes from the money it gets from stockholders. If a stock's return on equity ROE is higher, but its market price is lower, it may be undervalued. If the stock's return on equity ROE is low, but its market price is high, it may be an overvalued stock. The formula for ROE is ROE percentage equals net income divided by shareholders' equity. Number four, ROCE. Return on capital employed shows how often a company's income is enough to cover its debt and equity. Return on capital employed ROCE is a financial ratio that can measure how profitable a company is and how well it uses its capital. In other words, this ratio can help you determine how well a business uses its capital to make money. Generally, a company's chances of making long-term profits are better if its ROCE is higher. A higher ROCE means that a company's plans for using its capital are better. A lower ROCE could signify that the company is spending money inefficiently or that there is a lot of waste in how wealth is used. The formula for ROCE is ROCE equals Earnings Before Profit and Taxes, EBIT, divided by Capital Employed. Undervalued stocks could be a great chance to make well-thought-out investments with big returns. However, it's important to do a lot of research before you invest. The rules discussed in this video help you figure out some things you should consider when investing in undervalued stocks. That's all for today's video. If you want timely updates from this channel about investing in money, click the bell icon and subscribe to Omega Finance. Share your investment philosophy and the criteria you use to choose a firm to invest in in the comment section below. We have also uploaded a video on the book The Psychology of Money on our channel, which can be very helpful for you to know all the secret tips to becoming rich in that book. You can find the link to that video in the description below and in the card.